name is Andy Paul. Um, 39 years I've gotten involved in beekeeping um, through a program from the Ministry of Agriculture and um, ICA. Um, that was sometime in 2002, uh, after which I formally started beekeeping somewhere around 2004, 2005. When I started beekeeping, it was basically one high big of us. Um, at the time I was really looking for uh, a venture that I could mark as my own, you know? So when I was introduced to beekeeping, I decided that well, I, I really had like it, and in fact I was involved in beekeeping or uh, harvesting honey in the wild sometime before. So the course really took me on a venture that actually brought me to where I am today. With the honey, um, production of wax, um, we have this propolis sometimes, um, bee pollen, um, and sometimes we sell your product which is the bees. But these are some of the products. We're planning to get into some some other products like um, queens and, uh, and, and other things. So this basically are some of the products that we do from the bees. Okay. And you started with one hive. Yeah. Also with the object, as to how many you have? Um, I have, I have over 200 now. Um, can't remember the exact figure. In fact, this time of the year, really still expanding. So um, it's difficult to see how much I have now, but it's over 200. I think it has been very productive, profitable. Um, there is so much to be had from beekeeping. Um, I still consider myself as knowing so little because beekeeping is really a big industry. In fact, it's one of the biggest industries probably you can think about. So um, in terms of what the bees have been doing for us, research has shown that approximately 33% uh, of our food really comes from the pollination of plants. So um, really it has been very productive for me. Okay. What are some of the best practices that you employ on your farm um, to ensure um, that your venture is successful and some of them that you would recommend to new and potential beekeepers? Um, well, some of the practices, I really try to be as natural as possible. Um, taking into consideration the health of your bees, um, quite a lot of times we have farmers who engage in um, practices where they put the bees um, in areas that kind of affect them a lot, especially um, with some of the chemicals that are used. So um, we try to we try to use practices that that are safe for the bees and can really um, bring out the best out of them. So um, basically, these are some of the practices that we that we use in the beekeeping. Okay, and outside of the technical aspect, what are some of the organizational aspects that you, you know, come into play when you're um, dealing with your, your business? Um, well, we, I think we're touching one of the bigger problems in beekeeping here in Grenada. Um, we do not have an active organizational structure as of now. Previously we have had one and I think this was one of the things that really benefited me as a beekeeper. I had the foundation of others who knew better. We were provided with several training. Um, up to date, the organization has not been functioning as it could have and it used to. So um, it's like everybody by themselves. But I think it's one of the biggest lack that we are having and um, some of the trainings that I am providing. I am hoping that we can raise up a new breed of beekeepers who would really appreciate uh, being part of an organization where they can pass on their skills and um, help other beekeepers as we, as we continue the journey here in, in Grenada.
done several or have taught several um, beekeeping courses. Um, this one here um, is another one where the students are, where we am teaching the students um, level two of the CVQ uh, from the National Training Agency. Here they will be able to obtain a level two certificate, which will allow them to obtain jobs or uh, even um, going to their own business if they like. So um, in terms of that venture, I think we're paving the way forward where we not only produce training, but the folks have a valid certificate to show for the training. And um, that can tell a lot about the kind of pro um, service that they can provide when they go looking for jobs. And understanding that you started with one hive and you're here today um, contributing to the education of young beekeepers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, I, I think it really makes me makes me very happy that I have not only contributed to my own development, but I'm now contributing to, or I have contributed to many others, uh, because in some of the trainings that I have um, done in the past, several beekeepers have arised from it, and um, I think this one here will be of no exception. So, um, in fact, part of the plan or the goal after this training is to form an organized structure from which those guys will be able to share their experiences, um, relate to each other, and grow as an entity. So in terms of that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. And um, this is just, in, 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 in my view, um, a small contribution that I could have made. And I have already pledged that wherever I am given the opportunity to pass on my knowledge, because the truth is there is a big gap between those advanced beekeepers here in Grenada and those who are starting off. In fact, if you should get rid of most of the advanced beekeepers, uh, because a lot of us have not passed on our knowledge to some of the others, we're going to have serious problems with beekeeping here. And um, we have quite a number of us who prefer to hold back our information, our knowledge, and some of us may have good reasons. But um, I, I, I really think Thing for the for the survival of the industry in the beekeeping here, we really need to pass on those information, and that really makes me excited that I can be part of those who who really pass it on. Okay. I, being a full-time farmer and also an educator, how do you balance everything? Um, it is becoming more challenging now. But um, one of the ways that I use to balance it is those folks who I have trained, incorporate them in some of my um, programs. So they come as ready assistants to me. Um, this is one of the ways that I, that I balance it. I try to, to manage my time um, in such a way that I can sustain my business and still pass on information. So those are some of the ways that I really balance how I, how I get it done. What are some of the ways that we can, as humans, um, help to protect bees? What are some of the activities that we can do to help promote the growth of the population? Well, there's quite a lot of them. Um, so let me just list a few. Number one, we have to understand some of the toxic products that really affect in beekeeping, uh, not just here in Grenada, but across the world. In several of the industrialized countries, we heard about the colony collapse syndrome, which destroying large populations of bees. So um, in order for us to, 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 to really protect the industry, we have to collaborate with some important uh, personnel. For instance, our farmers. Um, they contribute, the farming industry contribute quite a bit um, to losses of bees because of some of the toxic chemicals that are used and um, also we are becoming more and more um, industrialized we're having a lot of um, factories not only in Grenada around the world 
and some of the products that are being used really are harmful to bees. So um, this is one of the ways that we can safeguard it um, by some of the chemicals that we that we use. Um, also education because if people get educated more as to the importance of bees I think they will learn to value it more. Um, in too many cases we have individuals for instance hives may have been in the wild and they are considered as as pests and some of them are being destroyed. Um, instead of doing that I think they should call a beekeeper, let the beekeeper, keep, let the beekeeper get it out, you know. Um, these are, are, are just some of the ways that we can we can we can do it. Um, so try to preserve the life of the bees. Try to educate ourselves as to the value of beekeeping. Um, it does not only affect us; it affects almost every creature on the planet. Because we are not the only ones that benefit from bees. Um, it is part of a food chain. It assists in the ecosystem. It contributes a lot. To, as as I said in the beginning, uh, almost one third of, of, of our food. I have traveled in several Caribbean islands and Grenada is one of the areas where you find the widest variety, especially of mangoes and citrus and a lot of that contribute to what you call cross-pollination of which bees play the major role in and um, I, I would like to believe that if there is no bees sooner or later we're going to have a lot more farming than we're now having because three third of the one third of the food that we now have we wouldn't have it so um education i think is one of the key um understanding the value of beekeeping of bees among us is another important element that will help us to to really preserve beekeeping and um passing on the skill to other individuals to preserve beekeeping is one of the other good aspects. What's your favorite thing about being a beekeeper? Um, I have a lot of favorites. Just the fact that I can um, come close to nature is one of the things that, that really thrills me. Um, the product that we get from bees, um, I really enjoy that a lot. But um, more so, just being among a creature that, you know, it just thrills me. So um, I really don't know what much to say in terms of favorite, but everything about the bees really fascinates me. Um, I look forward to going out to the bees every time I get the opportunity, you know? So um, quite a lot. And then um, in terms of our health, the bees really does affect us uh, in terms of healthy living. So much products that you can get from the bees that, that contributes to our health. We have things, for instance, where we, we're more accustomed with honey, but then we have pollen, which is another um, big health benefit from the bees, um, of which so many people are unaware of, you know? And um, so these are some of the things that, that, that are my favorites, really, in terms of getting to the beekeeping. Well, my plans in the my business venture really is to develop to the standard where we can export several of our products to other countries. Um, well, before we can export, we also want to be able to um, provide enough for our present market here in Grenada. Um, also, in terms of short term, I want to keep creating that enthusiasm among the beekeepers that I'm now training so that they can realize that they can really make a good livelihood out of, out of beekeeping. Um, for the long term, I really want to contribute towards informing our population as to the the vastness of the of the of the industry you see um, many people who think about beekeeping or the beekeeping industry or the bee industry only think about the hives and and taking care of the hives but especially in Grenada here we have a lot of need for uh, 
individuals who can do research into some of the important aspects that affect beekeeping here in Grenada. We, a lot of our money goes to the United States every year for the importation of materials and most of them could be constructed here, although we already have some individuals who have gone into the construction of materials. And um, so I, for the long term, I want to create that awareness among our general population and beekeeping uh, does not only um, involve individuals who might be considered as less of in society. We need doctors, we need nurses, we need everybody on board because beekeeping affects every one of us. And I think all of those individuals can really play a, play a part who is going to do the research, who is going to, you know, do the education and so on and so forth. So um, in, in, in short term and long term, that's, that's basically where I am heading.